Yeah, you saw the title. ASRock is doing what AMD didn't have the to do. Sure, it says on the box, 7900 XTX. But really, it's the 7970 XTX 3 gigahertz edition. Missed opportunity by AMD, I swear. That's okay, we'll do it. Okay, I get why. It's, it's gonna take 600 watts of power. And really the only system I have that is capable of handling such a monster machine is probably my Threadripper system. So the final destination for the system is gonna be my Threadripper system. And side note, something that I've been working on on the Linux side of things is the GPU reset. The 6000 series cards were generally trouble free as far as PCIe reset goes when passing through to a virtual machine. I'm sorry to say that the bug for Vega reset kinda sorta has returned, maybe? It's not as severe because it is possible to reset the card in some scenarios, which is really baffling. I got a whole, like, if you know, if you're an engineer working on this, you really want to reach out and say hello, let me know. Uh, but I haven't really dove into it too much yet because 7,000 series cards are new and 6,000 series cards are steel and work flawlessly on Linux for PCIe pass-through and then work, 7,000 series cards work flawlessly on Linux not for PCIe pass-through, which is, you know, a whole other story. But anyway, I digress. Let's unbox this. So the deal with the Aqua is that you pay a little bit more, but it comes with a pre-installed block that's got good thermal paste, and uh, it's basically set up and good to go for a custom loop cooling solution. I mean, what's, oh, sorry. I mean, what's not to love here? 24 gigabytes of VRAM, that good old ASRock Aqua know-how and love. This is not my first experience with an Aqua product. Man, look at this card. It's so pretty. It's so heavy. One thing that might've been nice for ASRock to include with a board at this price point is a uh, dual BIOS, backup BIOS kind of a feature. Cause sometimes you want to flash that power unlocked BIOS in order to get the three gigahertz. Very appealing. Although it's going to be a fingerprint magnet. Might I suggest not peeling until the end? Now that was appealing. Oh, you didn't get to see that. I carried it in here. It's really heavy. My wood grain front. Everybody remember my wood grain front? I need some, need some love and maintenance too. But this, this is pretty exciting because on the test bench, I've kind of already had a little bit of fun with this. It really is gonna be the 7970 three gigahertz edition. There's only about seven people in the audience that are old enough to get that joke. But let me tell you, the eight of us are having a real good time with it. Now, before this beautiful new card is consecrated by the dirty, dirty, filthy water that's been in my loop neglected for the better part of a year, we're gonna have to flush it out. And I've also got some of the old, you know, non-black tubing that I kind of think maybe I should go ahead and replace with something a little bit newer. And I've already sort of pre-drained the loop a little bit. We got a lot of work to do. I do have some new fittings, including, I think, this T piece, this was sent to one of, by one of our viewers, Galinda, thanks. That came from, from your stuff. And I also have the, the, uh, the Bits Power valve, which uh, we've 3D printed the handle for, because these, these break, the handle on these breaks kind of a lot in a certain run. Nothing wrong with Bits Power, you know, everybody makes mistakes. But uh, there's a 3D printable file that Amber did for the handle on that, so that's nice. And I got some right angle, you know, a thermal take and then a generic right angle one, so. I'm gonna be able to clean this up just a little bit. And I'm taking my wheels off so that the case can't roll off the desk and escape. And I've already pulled most of my RAM. Oh yeah, if you've never used EK's quick disconnect stuff, that's really handy. So it's like, oh, I need to pull my GPU and clean it. Ta-da, done. And that is what we're gonna put on this. We're gonna do quick disconnect. So I'll actually unscrew this and put our quick disconnect connector on the side and that'll make adding this GPU and taking out of this system or moving it to another system with the quick disconnect kit a little easier. I really got to hit up EK for another quick disconnect kit though because I've only got the one. Old school PCIe storage. Their EK wood block. It's beautiful <laughs> but not as beautiful as... Well, that's looking a little cleaner with everything being completely empty. 
So I think putting our drain in the lowest level in the corner there is probably gonna be the safest, easiest thing for our setup. So now I just have to make that happen. Did, did, did he use a self-tapping sheet metal screw to hold the block in place? Yes, he did. Now, I'm doing something a little sacrilegious here. I'm going to put in the Raystorm Neo CPU water block. They, ha they have an STR4 water block? Yeah. Two reasons. One, uh, the EK block's a little clogged up because it's been here in here forever, and I need to uh, clean it up. So that means taking it apart, testing it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm in kind of a hurry. The second reason is that Kyle from Heart OCP turned me on to these blocks. And it's just a copper plate with a distribution block and a clear top. It comes with the R all the RGB accoutrement and all that. But it's a lot easier to see when something is going wrong with your loop or if things are getting dirty with this plate. And it also performs slightly better than the STR4 block that I had on here previously. Now don't worry, I'll be able to reuse that block in another build. Probably a build with an Epic Milan CPU, probably one of the F-Series CPUs. But for now, this is pretty awesome. I got another one! A brand new one! Well, I wasn't sure that it was going to be brand new because it came from eBay. For the thermal paste, Arctic, of course. What else would I use other than Arctic? This black tubing is also from EK. It's not supposed to leach chemicals or anything like that into your distilled water. This is supposed to be the forever low maintenance, no maintenance tubing. We'll put it to the test. I wouldn't say that this loop has been zero maintenance since I originally installed it in this video. Which, some other video. It's the wood grain panel build, basically. I switched motherboards, but I didn't really clean the loop or do anything with it. When I switch motherboards, because this is an overclockable WRX80 the Azeroth workstation board, been very happy with that. This is the version one that has the Intel NICs. There's an Intel shortage. Turns out a bunch of people are getting ready to get laid off. <sighs> but this has the R2 has uh, not the Intel 10 gig NICs, which is also a pretty fine motherboard, as people on our forum have experienced, at least from the threads there. So, just gonna swap this out for the last bit of uh, plasticized tubing in case that was part of my problem while we flush this. Now even though I'm not using fancy hardline tubing or anything like that, you can make clever use of 45 and 90 degree fittings in order to get a certain look that you want for this, this kind of tubing. And we're almost ready to install our Azrock Aqua. Not quite. We need to finish flushing the loop here, but this is, uh, yeah, as you can see, we're in a lot better shape than we were. Now I love what I've done here with the layout. I mean, okay, the vertical GPU, it's not just to show off the GPU, it's functional. It frees up all of our other PCIe slots for whatever we want. I've pulled everything out so that I have more power budget to be able to do what I want, but we've got Optane mounted in there. Now I had planned to use the EK Quick Disconnect angled connector on the GPU, which would give us a little bit more clearance. I've got those, those small tubes coming off the back, but the, uh, the flow through holes on this GPU are larger than the normal size. So the gaskets wouldn't made up exactly where I expected them to. I wonder if there's an updated EK block for that or something. I didn't, I didn't have that handy when I did this, so I just sort of got it put together. And our GPU does have reasonably okay flow of water, although I think it might be happier if I used larger fittings and opened it up just a little bit more. But for this little bit of a trick of nostalgia for the 7970, XTX 3 gigahertz edition. We were able to get there, at least as far as a 3 gigahertz game clock is concerned. Yeah, we can we can get close to a 4090. We can outperform a 4090 if we really push the wattage. But I get why AMD didn't release a, a true 4090 competitor at literally any wattage. Although somehow NVIDIA was able to have their cake and eat it too with their 4090 because the 4090 with the unlocked thing could go past 600 watts, which is why we had the four connector, uh, four power connector thing in the first place. This one's only got three. 
So, I mean, that already tells you this is technically less wattage than the 4090 to achieve 4090-like performance, but it's still an absurd amount of wattage. So, I get why AMD did this. It really, I mean, it, it makes sense. I understand. It, it, they didn't want to do the 7973 gigahertz edition. Missed opportunity, but I'll do it. And it's not, it's not a 24-7 thing, obviously. But, hey, check out those Firestrike numbers. Check out those 3D mark numbers. Check out every benchmark under the sun and check out this ridiculous Threadripper system. The ASRock WRX80 motherboard is no slouch here. It's letting us do all of this. It's got all the auxiliary power to run a bajillion GPUs, which is what I normally do. I switched out my registered error correcting memory for 6,000 mega transfer gamer memory just to be able to have a little bit better performance. That's how crazy I am. 7970 XTX 3 gigahertz edition. Boom, in the bag. I'm Little, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. My loop's got almost no leaks in it. Mm.